Not many people, especially living people, can list wrote a constitution on their resume, but John Sanders can. As a director at the University of North Carolina School of Government, Sanders served as staff to the commission that rewrote North Carolina's constitution in 1971. And just as when it first appeared in the state's 1868 constitution, the new constitution included a critical statement about state support for higher education. The General Assembly shall provide that the benefits of the University of North Carolina and other public institutions of higher education, as far as practicable, be extended to the people of the state free of expense, says Article 9, Section 9. Sanders has given more thought than most to what that means. Well, it's a reminder to the legislature and to the public that higher education is an important public responsibility, which the legislature needs to keep in mind. I don't know that they came to a conflict, but they... It's a recognition <clears throat> that the state has a responsibility to support higher education, but not an unlimited responsibility. Sanders knows of no documentation for why state leaders in 1868 thought it an essential provision to include in the state's foundational document. But he suspects they recognized that tuition and other sources of funds at the time weren't sufficient to support a high-quality university. Well, it's a matter of progress here and throughout the country was not unique to North Carolina. We recognize that society as it developed in the 19th century needed a better educated class of citizens and to that purpose they needed to finance public schools and our education. There was little or no debate over the free as practicable provision in 1971, Sanders said. The rewrite was part of a movement among states to remove obsolete provisions from their constitutions, and there was only one vote against the new constitution in North Carolina's General Assembly. There was no revolution, no, no uh, political movement that, had, that led to the revision of the constitution to resolve a problem, but it was simply a good housekeeping measure in some degree. If the state or the university system was ever challenged in court over rising tuition, though, Sanders doubts a court would issue a definitive ruling on how much support the state must provide. It would depend a lot on the judges, what they think it means or ought to mean. And my guess is that they would not read it strictly to require a particular level of financing, but simply to remind the legislature, first of all, that there's an obligation there that ought to be met, but that it's not without limit. I don't think it can confine it, define it in a way that would result in an order to the legislature to support the institution to a certain percentage or a certain dollar level, but it's simply an admonition to the members of the General Assembly to remember the university and the obligation to support it. Traditionally, the university system's Board of Governors has expected each campus limit its tuition rates to the bottom 25 percent when compared with its peer institutions. Sanders considers that a reasonable standard. There's no scientifically exact way to gauge the degree of support the state ought to give to the institutions of higher education, but that approach is certainly a reasonable one.